From Creatures Entertainment, our next guest, Juan Navarro, is a comic book writer. He's amazing, and we're at Comic-Con 2014 Live. Thank you so much for joining us and keeping it locked here for your continuing coverage. Juan, thanks so much for joining us, Thank man. Thank you. What do you think of Comic-Con so far? It's been insane. I mean, I, you know, I missed my first time around here because I was at the booth manning it, and it was just wave after wave, and they told me, hey, you have to go, you have to go. I'm like, I can't, I'm signing stuff, I will send things. You know, when you started doing comics, mm -hmm. did you ever think you'd be sitting at a booth at Comic-Con signing autographs? That's still weird to me. That, and that, it never really loses that. I, I, I still have people that come up and say, oh, can you sign this? And I'm like, of course, like, who am I? Like, I'm like, I'm working towards being that guy that I can charge you something to like sign. I want to be a jerk one <laughs> well, day. I really I mean, want to be a jerk. You want to be a jerk. Yeah, really bad. But I don't know if that then, word would be terrific. We're all about being positive. I know. Until then, I'm going to be a nice guy. But I, but I like the idea. Like, it's pretty amazing. I, I, I know a lot of athletes, and I, I remember this once that um, this athlete was uh, offered. Uh, it was like seventy-five dollars a football, and they wanted him to sign ten thousand footballs, and he was like, no. And I'm like, what? And he's like, I don't need the money. And I'm like, you always need the money. It's just your autograph. Yeah. Like, do it. And I couldn't really even fathom that somebody was going to pay him that kind of money to sign. Yeah. And so yeah. it's kind of amazing. Yeah. And I mean, and some people want to have that thing so that they're always connected to you. We've done New York Comic Con a couple of years now, so it's great to have people come back. What's the weirdest thing you've ever signed? The weirdest thing I've ever signed. I mean, it's always been books, but I think I, I, I've signed a couple of props. I think one time we had a hammer from a short film we did from a zombie film, and it was full of blood and all that stuff. And they were like, after I left, one of the actors was like, hey, why don't you sign this? I'm like, all right, you know, sign a bloody hammer. And I thought, this is just evidence against me. And they could be using it for you know. That's funny, I like that. Um, tell me about, you see, where are you from? You're not from New York. No, we're from, I'm out of Miami. See, a New Yorker, you'd never do that. You'd never, you'd never touch it. You'd sign it like without <laughs> touching it. I, uh, somebody once in a restaurant was like, hey, I got a, he was a restaurateur. He was legally allowed to carry a gun. He's like, I got a new gun, you want to check it out? And I was like, whoa, hey, ah. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, it kind of, like, it was either going to fall or I was going to grab it. And I grabbed it, and then he, I wiped my fingerprints off, legit. And yeah, he goes, why are you wiping your fingerprints off? I go, hey, if you go out and shoot somebody later, I'm a New Yorker. I don't need my yeah, fingerprints yeah, on that. Like, that's that a New York yeah. thing. We know that. Yeah. All right, so tell me about, first of all, creative entertainment is pretty amazing, right? Yeah. And tell me about how you got hooked up with them. Well, uh, Creatures started in uh, 2008. I think it was a meetup. Creatures, I'm sorry. Yeah. I called it creative. Uh, we're creative, too. Yeah. Take it. I don't mind. Uh, we started, it, it was like a meetup.org thing. And originally, we just got together to talk and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, you know, we had all the similar interests. We we're all Latin American background from Miami, uh, Cuban American, Mexican American. So we were all like, wow, cool. There's other, others of us as nerdy as us into this. <laughs> I was already making comics still then, but now I found a group that was like-minded. And after that, we just bonded and became a studio. How'd you get into making comics? I, you know, the classic, I was drawing always forever as a kid, and it was like the one thing that, that I got hooked onto. Like, I, I was always a reader when I was a kid. Did you graffiti? Not really, not really, I, but I, I was around like that's that a, crew so I feel much. like that's a great way to get into comic book illustration. I think it's just one of the ways, like in art, that you will just, like, you'll see something, you, you love it, and then you'll just get into it, and then you, after you get into it, you find other ways of projecting. How do you do it? Do you do it digitally, or do you draw? I still do old school. I'm very wow. old school. I'm very, like, I use a light box, I use ink, I use pencils. How long does it stuff. take you to make, let me have one of these. Let's, let's put them up. Come on. So this is res a million, a million lives an hour. Okay. Yeah, it's a story about a detective that uses his past lives to solve crimes. Wow. And we that's originally cool. had that. Um, that's my first book that I solely wrote. I never, I didn't do the artwork for. So you have the art, the covers done by Jeff Tikal. He's a, a Marvel comic book artist. He did the covers for Journey into Mystery. And um, the interiors are done by John Del Sneed and uh, Cole Brustad. And it was originally a book I put together in Kickstarter, and it was just really well received. Everybody really How got is behind Kickstarter it. for creatives, for, for I think illustrators it's a great and writers? Place because if you can present a concept the right way and get people excited about it, they will come to go to see it. You know what I'm saying? They will support it. Now after that, your reputation is on the line. So you gotta deliver, you gotta talk. People wanna be involved in it. They like the idea, they wanna be involved, they wanna be part of it, they wanna feel that they're part of it. So you gotta be on that, you know? How long would it take you to draw like something like this? Well, it depends the book. I mean, Tommy took me maybe two years to do the last two issues. I mean, I still have a day two job. Two years? I, I still have a day job, and yeah. I'm also the editor-in-chief of the company, so I'm constantly looking at scripts, revising artwork, doing different stuff, you know. Uh, How, and, and, and what's your day job? 
I'm an art archivist for a private art collection. Wow. So I handle an art collection. That's I pretty, pretty much amazing. Everything that's on there. Yeah. And and so this is Tommy right here. Let, let me story, show everybody this. It's a story this. about a little boy who has an imaginary friend and finds yeah. out his imaginary friend's a serial killer. Wow. Yeah. So it was one of these things that we were batting back and forth. That's pretty funny. And we just, yeah, it's, it's pretty much dealing with a, a living cartoon. But, you know, a lot of people say, well, then the kid's doing it, right? Or then the imaginary friends, I'm like, I'm not going to tell you. Read the book <laughs> and you'll see everything that's involved. That's pretty awesome. I like the idea of that story. And you drew this one, too. Yeah. I'm and, and it took you two years. And you've got, you're an editor and you've got the day job. Yeah. And you guys are getting busier and busier, more yeah, popular well, and more popular. Well, we just got into Diamond Distribution. That's Ravenous. That's going to be the first issue that's going to be going through Diamond. It's uh, debuting in January. Uh, it's by uh, John Ayua, my publisher and partner, and uh, Jose Varese, my other partner. And he's an amazing artist, as you can see, some of the great artwork that's in there. And how hard is it to edit other people's work? It, well, I, I've been an art director before. I worked in graphic design for many years, so it's not bad because I can see what we, what needs to be done and get the actual concept out. It's not what I like. I says what's best for the actual concept and to really make it move forward. It's pretty awesome. I'm super impressed with you know what you've been able to do here. Um, we've got another uh, Tommy, right? Well, there's zombie. Oh, zombie, actually. zombie. I'm sorry. Yeah, this zombie is zombie. It's a post-apocalyptic zombie tale. I said in Miami, it's like The Walking Dead with way better weather. <laughs> so, you know, it, that's me, my love letter to Miami. I was born and raised there. And it's funny because, you know, anybody that's been there, when they read the book, they get it. They're like, I totally see what this is about. And it, I was just looking for a zombie tale that takes place, you know, with a lot more in a hotter climate, in a crazier place. You know, how Miami you, is insane. How do you I'm come insane. up with the story ideas? It has to be something that really catches my, my eye. Like, it has to be a concept that I really care about, you know. Um, it can be anything. I mean, the only thing we don't do is superhero books. Okay. I really don't do superhero books. I don't really, you know, if you want that, you can go to the big two, you know? Sure. Um, everything else is fair game. So I'm always looking for something that, I'm not always trying to make a message. If I can entertain you for 15, 20 minutes and I give you a laugh, I'm happy with that. What do, what do you like to read? A little bit of everything, but mostly anything that kind of engages me as a comic book. I mean, there's some books, you know, the popular ones like Saga, um, and other books like, you know, even The Walking Dead, or, but you know, you have other books like uh, Kevin Joseph does a book called Tart, and it's all like a one big dream sequence. It's like this time traveling book, and it's just a dream sequence. I hate time travel. I don't really care for it. Every time I read a time traveling book, it hurts my head. But what's great is that it doesn't present itself like that. So it tells another story. So tell me about how uh, you like how you take in comics. Do you do you read them on a train, a plane? Do you read them at home? Do you read them everywhere? I read them in space. Do you read them in a case? Um, <laughs> I, I read them everywhere. Wow! I, can. I walked you into that one. I huh? know. I was like, <laughs> I, I read them anywhere I can. I do a lot of digital. I still support my local comic book shops. I go and buy mostly indies, uh -huh. and then most of my digital stuff I'll actually uh, buy from, you know, if I'm reading any of the big two, I, I follow more writers and, and artists that I like, um, but I read everything I can. I mean, I just did an estimate the other day that we had, I've read over 2,000 books this year. Do you, over 2,000? I read about five or six comics a month, a day. A day? A day. And you do the art collection, yeah. and you edit, and you yeah. uh, illustrate. I wake up at six now in the I morning, I, and I go to sleep at midnight. So and now I know why it's it's two years to write your own. Yeah. And are your is your stuff available digitally? Yes. Uh, we're on Comixology. We're going to be changing up a couple of things just because we're doing new editions now that we're in the diamond and we're reforming some of the titles. But yeah, we can. You, uh, if you go to creatureentertainment.com, you can find all our stuff on there. Do you think you'll ever start doing it digitally as far as drawing? I'm planning to. Uh, once the technology kind of, I think, gets more affordable, mm -hmm. and at the same time, I think, I guess they, they gotta they gotta bring in that biofeedback from a pencil dragging on a paper. You know, the feel of a brush on a paper when you've been around that long enough. For these younger kids that are doing it now, that's I all they know. Them. Yeah. yeah, they know an iPad. They just sit right. there and they know that feel. I can't. I, I feel like I'm drawing on a piece of glass. So I'm like, it doesn't feel like I'm drawing. Yeah, it might be a while before they make it feel like you're drawing on a piece of paper. Well, now they're coming out with these new tips and they do this, and I, I and some of my artists do work completely yeah. digitally. You do? You you, know? Have you ever tried the walk home stuff? Yes, yes, I actually. I think uh, last year they were here. I tried it out. I've tried out a couple of different things, the Syntex and stuff. They're really cool. They're really awesome, and there's a lot of possibilities there. What's your favorite overall favorite comic book? Favorite comic? It was uh, the Max by Sam Keith. 
All right. That thing blew me out of, at that time I was out of comics. I was a fine artist. I was doing painting and everything else. I was considering art school and everything else, and I found the Max, and I was like, wow, you can do whatever the hell you want now. And that's when I was, I gotta, I have to, I have to do this, and, and it really, it really lit something in me. You know? What about movies? I mean, or shows? Do you like a lot of these shows and movies? I, you know, I have this thing where I kind of tell people, like, I read my comics, I don't watch my comics. Yeah. I have nothing against the movies. The movies are awesome, they're fun. But I, I rather read it. Yeah. You know, I rather read it. I'll, now I'll go to any of the Marvel movies or even the DC movies and go enjoy them like anybody else. Do you but. see that maybe one day there'll be a convergence of kind of like an almost like an animated comic book or something like that in digital form? You see a little bit of that now. There's a lot of different effects. I mean, it's funny because sometimes I'm like, okay, now this is becoming an animation. This is becoming right. an animatic. But now there's this whole thing about messing with the interface. Like how you, scr now instead of turning a page, you're scrolling a page. I don't like that. See, that's the thing. I mean, I, I think it's not for us. It's like, hey, we're, right. I mean, that's the thing, right? It. The kids are like, yeah, we'll scroll forever, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't mind if it serves the story. Maybe it actually, now that I think about it, I wouldn't like it, but maybe it makes it, it just keeps flowing. It makes it more continuous. You never yeah, have to that, be like, that's what's called you the never have to page canvas, break. The yeah. infinite canvas comic book. And there's people that have done genius work with that. And other people have used it like, it's like using lens flare in Photoshop. Like, hey, I'm going to put lens flare on everything. You know, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's ketchup. It doesn't do anything. It's bad food with ketchup on it. So there's the two two ends. But when it's done right, like anything else, when it's done perfect, you're like, oh wow, this is this is amazing. Now you're you now you have faith in the technology. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. Um, thank you so much for joining us, thank Juan you Navarro, for me. Creatures Entertainment. Check out his work. The Tommy series is great. All of it's great, though. Check yeah. it all out. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be back. Oh, wait, before you go, I forgot about this almost. We've got something I cool for you. I get stuff? You get stuff for being <laughs> on. We've got an Electro Kid from, it's an Electro Kids mm -hmm. from Wowie. Look, okay. you push the little button and we play some music and the hair moves. It's just fun. It's a cool <laughs> thing. Maybe awesome. it'll inspire you while you write. And, and going uh, on my drafting table for sure. There you go. It's, sure. it's, it's a lot of fun. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with a whole lot more from Comic-Con Live here in New York City. We're on geekbeat.tv. We're on Planet 5D. And thank you so much for watching on those platforms. We're also on beatterrific.com. That's us. And, of course, we're doing this with the Padcaster. By the way, don't forget that you can go to the App Store, iTunes, Android, and also Kindle, and download the Beat Terrific app so that you can take us on the go not only live, but also our pre-recorded content that's edited. And of course, you can interact and engage with us there. We'll be back right after this. Stay with us.